And welcome everybody to game two of the doubleheader here between Michigan Softball and the visiting Rutgers Scarlet Knights. I'm Jared Greenspan, back here with you from Alumni Field, along here with my partner Charlie Brigham. We're about ready for first pitch. The Wolverines took game one behind a 13-run offensive onslaught, dominant fashion, topping Rutgers 13-0. Uh, and just five innings due to the run rule, and that was the offense that really powered them through. And now here we go for game number two with Megan Bobian on the pitcher circle. Delivers the first pitch down the middle, but just a little high for ball one to the third baseman, Peyton Linkavage, leading off for Rutgers. Saw Bobian go the distance in the game last night in the 3-0 victory. With pitchers like, you know, Alex Rocco and Megan Bobian, we've said it time and time again, those three runs are really all you need. Uh, that one is high, and it's 2-0. and We saw Starocco battle command issues at the beginning a little bit in game number one, and Bobby in behind in the count, 2-0 and to Linkavage, who took an 0-for in game number one, 0-for-2 with a strikeout. Bobby in delivers the 0-2. It's fouled back to the right side. A good hack, two balls and a strike. Bobby does a great job of just changing speeds and changing locations. He went with that off speed on the first pitch, that one pumping up the velocity a little bit on the outside half of the plate, just trying to keep these Rutgers hitters on their toes. Two and one the count. Bobby in into the windup and deals. Slashed fouled on the first baseline. Winds up all the way into the right field corner, and it's two and two. Both corners getting a lot of work in this series. We saw Yesterday, the third baseman for Rutgers, Peyton Linkavage, get a lot of work just in that hot corner. Balls getting ripped down the line. There was a few balls hit towards the first baseline in game number one. Here comes the 2-2. Foul straight back again, and we'll do it again. A six pitch of the at-bat upcoming to Linkavage to lead off the game. After her is Callaway and then Bach. One, two, three in the Rutgers order against Megan Bobian. Pitching in game number two for the Wolverines after Alex Starocco went four scoreless innings in game number one. Here comes the 2-2 to Lynn Cavage. Rifled to first right at Lou Allen. She snags it for the first out of this one. As I was just saying, the hot corner. That ball scorched down the line. Lou did a nice job stepping over with that left foot. Routine play right into the first baseman's mitt. And as you said, that's going to be out number one. That will bring up the hitter number two. And that will be Gabriel Callaway for Rutgers. She hit in the two hole in game number one. 0 for 1 with a walk. Struck out once against Alex Starocco. First pitch to the lefty is up and away 1 and 0. Graduate student Callaway has really been a huge part of this Rutgers lineup all season long. I mean, her and Peyton Linkavage have kind of been a one two punch, the real heart of this Rutgers lineup. You look at just the raw averages, nobody's hitting too great, but those two stand well above the crowd. The 1-0 from Bobian. Right just a bit outside, and it's 2-0. So Bobian has gone 2-0 on each of the first two hitters to begin game number two of a double header. If you missed the first one, it was quite the game for the Wolverines, a 13-0 victory that they won via the run rule. Here comes the 2-0. That clips the outside corner a strike, and it's 2-1. Weather's still beautiful. Sun's retreated behind the clouds a little bit, but still 70 degrees, nice warm weather, not too much of a breeze. The baseball game just got going a few moments ago right over at Ray Fisher Stadium past center field. Bobian behind in the count, two and one. She delivers it to Callaway, grounded right back to her on her knees, knocks it down, gets it off the mound, fires to first in time. Nifty play by Megan Bobian, knocked it, knocked it down and then ran in front of her and... Threw out the runner, Callaway, for the second out of the inning. That ball took an awkward bounce off Bobian's right knee and skirted in front of her, ran, fielded on her knees, threw it around. I mean, just great composure. We saw her get battered with balls like that last night, and she struggled a little bit to field them cleanly. Had two fielding errors, and both runners reached safely, but that one not phased. So two up, two down for Bobian. That'll bring up Kayla Box. She went over in the opener. First pitch is high, 1-0, and and that's a theme for Rutgers hitters. They only had one hit in that first game, and that was Iliopoulos rifled a single to right center field. Unable to break through against Dorocco for four, and then Sarah Schaefer closed things out. Here's the 1-0 to Bach right down the middle. It's 1-1. One one. Yeah, I mean, these Michigan pitchers have been just dominating 
Rutgers through these first two games only has three total hits. They just haven't been able to find gaps. And Michigan's defense should be commended as well. Bobians 1-1 one, one, off speed at the knees. 1-2. and two. That's just vintage Megan Bobian right there. Leaning on the change up and just absolutely freezing the younger hitter in Kayla Bach. Bobian has Bach where she wants her. Here's the one, two. Just missed. Couldn't tell if that was a bit inside. Looked about like it clipped the knees. Uh, Bobian didn't get the call she wanted. And so Bach stays alive in this one. We're in the top of the first of the second game of the doubleheader here from Alumni Field. Here comes the 2-2 two -two to Bach. Chop to second. Jimenez has it. Throws to first in time. So it's an easy 1-2-3 inning for Megan Bobian. Michigan coming to bat in the bottom of the first. No score. Beautiful inning there from Bobian. Real efficient. I mean... Gets through one, two, three, only 10 pitches. Gets that last routine ground ball over towards Julia Menez. Solid as a rock over there at second base. And Michigan, look at the continue, the offensive attack that we mentioned before. They put up six runs in the bottom of the first inning in game one, six runs in the bottom of the third, and tacked on one more from the Kiki Thole solo home run in the fourth inning. Lexi Blair will be due up first, followed by Natalia Rodriguez and Lou Allen. Game one, Lexi went one for three. Hit the ball really hard. The line drive took off the glove of pitcher Jaden Vickers. And the Wolverines will be batting today, at least to start, against Ashley Hitchcock, who gets the start for Rutgers. It's 5 and 15 on the season with a 5.44 ERA across 127 and a third innings. He's walked 84 and struck out 84. Opponents hitting 296 against her. Yeah, we saw Hitchcock throw last night. At times, Michigan really struggled to get stuff going off of her, and they just couldn't seem to put runs across. They would, you know, get a single here and there. I think they had eight total hits in that 3 nothing victory, but just kept leaving runners stranded. Hitchcock did a nice job of getting herself out of some jams and multiple situations where Michigan left, you know, two runners on base. Hitchcock last night. Six innings, nine hits, gave up three runs, walked one, and struck out three. Faced, 20, faced 28 batters and threw 105 pitches. So Alexi Blair steps into the batter's box in the bottom of the first. After a 1-2-3 start for Megan Bobian, Michigan scored 13 runs in game number one. Let's see what the offense has in store for a potential encore. Here in game two, Hitchcock in the pitcher's circle, Blair in the batter's box, and we are ready to get the bottom of the first rolling. The first pitch to Blair is cut and a miss on a fastball, and it's nothing and one. Lexi getting after that first pitch, not something you typically see her do. Usually a pretty patient hitter up there at the plate. A lot of the time, especially just all the way through the Michigan lineup, really, see him take that first pitch usually. Blair had two of Michigan's nine hits last night against Hitchcock, and she takes that one outside, a ball and a strike. Saw so a very rare strikeout from Lexi Blair last night against Hitchcock, just caught her looking. Batting 415 on the season, six home runs, 22 RBIs, and she fouls that one straight back up and over the bleachers and out of play. So Blair behind in the count, one and two. She does not strike out often, just seven times on the season. Looking to get Michigan's offense going here in the bottom of the first. Led off game one with an infield hit, came around to score the first of 13 runs in that one. And she lines that one into left center field. That's down for a base hit and heading toward the gap. Blair flying around first, she's into second. And that's all she'll get. It's a lead off double for Lexi Blair to in the bottom of the first for Michigan. Lightning strikes twice for Lexi Blair. The leadoff hit of last night's game against Ashley Hitchcock was a double just in the other gap. I mean, Lexi Blair just really has her number. And up comes Natalia Rodriguez. It's got to be kind of deja vu for Hitchcock right now. Blair led off the game with a double last night. Rodriguez followed it up with a double of her own. Don't want to leave a ball over the plate here. 
so the aforementioned Rodriguez steps into the dish with Blair at second and nobody out. Rodriguez took an offer in game one and she takes that one high, 1-0. One Blair, of course, with plenty of speed on second. We saw her speed make all the difference in the first inning of game number one, reached on an infield hit, went to third on an infield hit, beating out a throw, and then came around to score the opening run on a wild pitch. Here comes the 1-0 from Hitchcock, and it's low, two balls and no strikes. Great plate discipline there from Antaya Rodriguez. Wouldn't be surprised to see her lay down a bunt here. Might, might swing away on the 2-0 hitters count, but wouldn't be too surprised to put Lexi Blair on third base. 2-0, the count to Rodriguez, and she takes it low. With Stanley held that one for a little extra time. She wanted that strike, did not get the call from Jonathan Hand. He's behind home plate calling the balls and strikes this afternoon. So Natrod did square there, so it is in play. 3-0 and oh the count, and that one's down the middle, 3-1. and one. We're in the bottom of the first. Lexi Blair on second base with nobody out, leading off with a double. No score between Michigan and Rutgers in game two of this doubleheader from Alumni Field. Three and one, the count to Rodriguez. And she takes it low, ball four. And so the table is set for the big boppers in the order. Lou Allen, who had herself a day going three for three in game number one, steps the dish with two ducks on the pond and nobody out. Yeah, just as scary in the on-deck circle, Taylor Bump. Let's see, first pitch to Allen. She takes it high and tight, a ball and no strikes. Allen was first pitch swinging in game one, and she rifled one down the left field line for extra bases that drove in a pair. Laid off that one, though, so want to know the count. Speed on the bases, Blair at second, Rodriguez on at first. Here's the 2-0, chop to second, and the only play is to first for Lane. So a productive out, nonetheless, for Lou Allen. The runners advance, Blair to third, Rodriguez to second, and one away for Taylor Bump. First time today that Lou Allen went back to the dugout, went three for three, like we said. But Taylor Bump, if there's anybody in this lineup who's red hot, it's her. Two for three last game. Home run, five RBIs, a triple as well. I mean, she couldn't be stopped. First pitch to Bump. Upstairs, 1-0. Bump had a big three-run homer that pushed the score to 12 to nothing in the first game. A majestic shot into left field. Batting 3-22 on the year now. A Team high 10 home runs to go along with 27 RBI. Here's the 1 0, and that's outside 2 0. Looks like they're going to walk Taylor Bump. I mean, why wouldn't you? Two for three last game with a triple and a home run. And so Bump will get the intentional pass to load the bases for Hannah Carson. And as scary as. Taylor Bump is. I mean, loading the bases for a person like Hannah Carson, I mean, that's just as dangerous. But that is nonetheless the strategy that Rutgers opts to take. Hannah Carson, who is the designated player in today's game with Kiki Thole, who homered in game one, throwing the start behind the dish. Carson hitting 298 on the year, one for two with a single in game one. And she finds herself at the dish with three runners waiting to come home and only one out. 15 RBIs on the season and speed in both positions on second and third. First pitch, a fastball at the letters for a strike. Nothing in one. Carson in game number one went one for two with an RBI. Hitchcock looking to wiggle her way out of a jam. Here's the 0-1 to Carson. Takes it low. Good take. And it's 1-1. One and one. Looked like she wanted to go around on that one, but held back in plenty of time. Yeah, the hips fired through. The hands held steady, though. 
Again, we've just, we harp on it so much, but great plate discipline from the Wolverines. 1-1 one, one to Carson. Outside, ball two. If you're handed Carson here, a walk is as good as a hit. You're going to score a run either way. Just don't try to be too greedy. Don't try to do too much. Just work this at bat for all it's worth. Head in the count, two and one. Here it comes from Hitchcock, fouled straight back off the screen, and it's two and two. That was a big swing from Hannah Carson. Blair, the runner at third. She led off the bottom of the first with a double. Rodriguez on at second after a walk, and bump on at first after getting an intentional pass. You know Lexi Blair likes to be aggressive at third base. Stole home on a pass ball last game, even when her teammate Taylor Bump was holding her up. Here comes the 2-2 to Carson, fouled back, a defensive hack. Back to the screen again, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Still, we'll do another one. The sixth pitch of the at-bat upcoming to Hannah Carson from Ashley Hitchcock. Rutgers just trying to escape the first inning scoreless after giving up six in the first inning in game one and putting themselves in a hole well too big to climb out of. Here comes the 2-2. Tough take, and it just misses a little upstairs and away. And Carson has worked the count full. With Stanley held that one for a real long time. I mean, Carson was stepping out of the box, and she was still holding it. But really good at bat so far from Hannah Carson, just fighting off anything she doesn't want. Great two-strike approach. Base is loaded, one away. Here comes the 3-2 to Carson. Foul back to the screen. We'll do it again. Pitch number eight coming up. Carson really battling up there. Carson doing a great job of making him throw pitches. Full count on the way again to Hannah Carson. Swing and a line drive into right center field. That one's down for a base hit. Over to cut it off is Rutgers. One run is in. Here comes Rodriguez. She'll score. It's a two-run double for Hannah Carson. And Michigan strikes first yet again. It's two to nothing. Hannah Carson saw them walk Taylor Bump and said, oh, yeah, I'll just do it myself. I'll make that one hurt. Great piece of hitting there. Double into the right center gap. Taylor Bump reaches third, standing up, two-run score. Michigan hasn't taken their foot off the gas since game one. Michigan right back in business. Carson with the big hit. And now Julia Jimenez into the dish looking to keep things rolling. And a meeting at the mound for Rutgers as the beleaguered pitching staff looks to solve the riddle that is getting Michigan out, especially in the first inning. That's how eight first inning runs Michigan has scored in these two games today combined. Another huge, I mean, as big as that, you know, double in the gap is, the real main part of that at bat is she made her throw so many pitches. Hitchcock, that was, you know, close to a 10-pitch at bat as Kayla Bach heads down to the bullpen to start warming up. But Rutgers only has four pitches, four pitchers. We saw two of them, Jaden Vickers and um, Izzy Barati in game number one. So they're working their way through their pitching staff. First pitch to him in is way upstairs. For a ball one with Stanley out of her crouch to snag it before it could hit the backstop. And it's 1-0. And, oh. and has spinning the bat between her hands. Takes a deep breath now, settling back in. Here's the 1-0 to Jimenez. Just below the knees, it's ball two. So Hiscock now not doing herself any favors, putting herself in a tough situation. Behind in the count, 2-0. Two, oh. two runs already in in the inning. Bump stands at third. And on at second is Carson with just one away. 2-0 to Jimenez. Chopped to third. It's a fair ball. Gloved and fired across the infield by Lynn Cabbage for the second out of the inning. That's just unfortunate for Michigan there. Tough break. A lot of the balls down that third baseline have just managed to go foul. And they've had a little bit of help from the umpires down either line so far, but... Lynn Cabbage doing a nice job keeping that one in fair territory, keeping Taylor Bump at third base. More importantly than anything else, getting the second out of this inning. So Lexi Voss 
Now has a chance to drive in some two out runs. Runners at third and second. Two outs. And Voss first pitch swinging fouls it back. Nothing in one. Voss hit a home run. The first of three home runs the Wolverines hit in game number one. It went out to left field. A towering shot. Yeah, Lexi Voss had a huge first game. Three RBIs. Two of them came on a single. The 0-1 fouled straight back again. Nothing in two. A pair of good hacks by Voss. Time to see if she could straighten it out. Hannah Carson doesn't have blistering speed on second base, but definitely a really good athlete and has the wheels to score if a ball lands somewhere in the gap. Also will be going with two outs. Here's the 0-2. Right down the middle, strike three called. So good job by Hitchcock to prevent further damage, but Michigan strikes first again. Two runs in the inning, two hits, the big one. A two-run gapper for Hannah Carson. Her double scored Blair and Rodriguez, and Michigan's up two to nothing at the end of one. Love to see the production just keeping their foot on the gas. I mean, Rutgers has got to be growing tired of watching Michigan Wolverines cross home plate. That's now the 15th today. Bobine will take her spot back out in the circle for her second inning of work in this contest. Defensive lineup has returned to its original state. We saw a bunch of substitutions at the end of last game and the onslaught that was the 13 to nothing victory. Audrey LeClaire, Kiki Thole, Thais Gonzalez all getting at bats as well as a few more. Megan Bobian back to the pitcher circle, ready for her second inning of work. Shut down Rutgers 1-2-3 back in the first with an impressive fielding play by herself, helping herself out there. Rutgers will have 4-5-6 up in the order. That's Fawcett, Iliopoulos, and with Stanley for the Scarlet Knights. Yeah, Rucker's going to look to get something going here. Michigan has now scored over the past two days, now 16 through the first two games, and now 18 unanswered runs. And so Taylor Fawcett steps in, the 143 hitter, ready to take her hacks against Megan Bobian. To begin the top of the second, first pitch just above the letters 1 and 0. Rise ball just missing a little bit there. Rutgers has done a nice job kind of letting those ones go that are just right above the letters, doing a good job not really chasing too much. 1 0 to Bobian, off speed pitch, catches the knees, 1 and 1. That pitch is just. Absolutely filthy. You saw Fawcett was all off balance. Didn't even attempt to throw her hands at that one. Bobian is the reigning co-Big Ten Pitcher of the Week for her efforts last weekend against Minnesota as she deals the 1-1. It's popped up foul. Behind the plate goes Thull. She might have a play, and she does, making the catch for the first out of the inning. Great play there by Kiki Thull. That's a tough play for anybody, especially she had to turn her back to her original positioning, and the wind is blowing out, so she had to adjust to that. I mean, just great play. And so Bobian, in that series against Minnesota, pitched 15 innings, struck out 21, allowed nine hits, and just one run to cross the plate, won twice. Here's the first pitch to Iliopoulos. It's upstairs, 1-0. And then, of course, she picked yet pitched yesterday, picking up the winner, 14th on the season. Here comes the 1-0 to Iliopolis. Also upstairs, 2-0. Iliopolis, the only hit for Rutgers in that last game. Solid piece of contact. Drove it to right center field against Storaco. Comes the 2-0, right down the middle of fastball, and it's 2-1. and one. Rutgers again in an early hole. A daunting task, any hole a daunting task for Rutgers, considering the state of their offense at the moment. 
still searching for the first run in this series through 13 innings. Here's the 2-1, off speed, floated down the left field line, foul. And it's 2-2, two and two. Iliopoulos a little out in front of that one. Iliopoulos was, like you said, made solid contact, but was way out in front, was caught off balance by the changeup. You saw her front fit land and her hips fire through, and then at the last second just threw her hands out at it. Made really good contact considering how off balance she was at the start of that. So Bovian even now after falling behind 2-0, oh, which 2-2. Two and two. Here it comes to Leopolis, chopped to short. Jimenez Rodriguez rather ranging over, gloves and fires in time for the first out of the inning. That's three ground ball outs through four batters for Megan Bovian. Rodriguez showing off the athleticism there, going to her left hand, fielding that one on the run, squaring up her hips, replacing the feet. Great defensive play. And that'll bring up the five hitter for Rucker. That'll bring up uh, Iliopoulos for, or the six hitter rather for Rutgers with Stanley. And first pitch is a strike, nothing in one. So five up, five down for Megan Bobian against the Rutgers lineup, which continues to struggle. Stanley looking to get something going. And check swing roller down the third base side and it turns foul, fielded over there by Bump. And it's quickly nothing and two. Just like that ball hit deep down the line by Iliopoulos, that one with Stanley was way out in front. The changeup caught her way on her front foot, just threw the hands at it, just had much less successful contact than her teammate Iliopoulos did. So with Stanley in an 0-2 hole, Bobian look, looking to put away the side. Here it comes, and it rides upstairs one and two. I like that pitch decision, going to the rise ball there, trying to get her to chase and give you a free one. With Stanley 0 for 1 with a walk in game one. Batting 225 on the season. Here comes the 1-2. Swung on and fouled straight back. A good cut to stay alive, and it remains one and two. Bobian goes back to the rise ball there, shook off her first sign, and then went back to it. You know, she's confident in every pitch she throws. A huge part of her success. Bobian's 1-2, the rise ball again high, and it's two balls and two strikes. So with Stanley doing a nice job here of staying in the at-bat, fouled off a couple of pitches, and now worked it to 2-2 two and two after initially falling behind nothing in two. Shortstop Kiana Workman trying to time up Bobian over in the on-deck circle. Comes the 2-2 for Bobian, lifted in the air to left field, easing under it is Blair, she'll make the catch. And it's another 1-2-3 inning for Megan Bobian. Six up, six down, heading to the bottom of the second. Wolverines on top, two to nothing. Again with Stanley way out in front of that one. That change up from Bobian just absolutely lethal getting the hitters off balance we've seen a couple people make decent contact but nothing they can really drive because their swing is happening basically in two parts where they get ready to swing and then realized oh shoot it's this change up coming at me and i just have to wait and wait and wait and then throw my hands at the last second and it's hard to blame them going up going up against Sirocco in the first game and now bobian in the second two of the premier pitchers Certainly in the Big Ten and the nation as well. So Ashley Hitchcock back for her second inning in the work. She'll, fa she'll face 8-9-1 in the Michigan order. That's Kiki Thole, Haley Hoganrod, and then Lexi Blair. As Michigan looks to add to what is already a 2-0 lead, Hannah Carson drove in a pair of runs with a double in the first, plating Blair and Rodriguez. And that's where things stand now in the bottom of the second. Between the Wolverines and Rutgers, a four-game weekend series. Michigan has already captured the first two to push their record to 34-6 and six on the season. They're also 11-1 and one at the friendly confines of Alumni Field. Kiki Thole getting their spot in the starting lineup after that monstrous performance last game. Got her one shot and made the most of it. Worked a full count, worked a really good at bat, and then crushed a home run to left center field. 
it was 3-0. and She took two straight strikes, and then boom, an impressive home run to center. And she finds her way, earns her way, into the starting lineup here, drawing the start behind the plate. Hannah Carson, her fellow catcher, the designated player in today's game. So Kiki Thull, right-handed hitter, steps in against Ashley Hitchcock to begin the bottom of the second. First pitch taken inside on a fastball, 1-0. and Hitchcock allowed those two runs in the first, but it could have been worse. The Wolverines had runners on second and third with just one out. And Hitchcock induced a ground ball to third and a strikeout to limit the damage. There's a strike on the inside corner, and it's one and one. First strike, Kiki Thole has seen that didn't have three balls in front of it. One one on the way to the freshman, and it rides high. Two balls and a strike. Thole lays off. You know, for the limited amount of at bats that Kiki Thole has had this year. She looks really confident up there in the box. Comes the 2-1. Taken just a bit low, 3-1. and one. So Thole works a three-ball count again. Looking to provide Michigan with a leadoff base runner in the bottom of the second to get things going. Hitters count here for Kiki Thole. Got to be careful if you're Hitchcock. Hitchcock delivers the three run, ripped foul down the third base side. A few feet foul. Well, she got the pitch she wanted, was I waiting on that one for the three one and just ripped it. But she was ready for it. As you said, just a little bit foul. So Kiki Thull in familiar territory with the full count. That was the count, of course, that she homered off of in game one for the 13th run in Michigan's 13-0 victory. Here comes the 3-2 to Thull. Upstairs, ball four, and she's worked a leadoff walk. So for the second straight inning, Michigan has a leadoff base runner. First it was Lexi Blair with a double, now it's Kiki Thull with a walk, and that'll bring up Haley Hoganrod. Looks like we're gonna have a pinch runner over there on first base. It Looks like it is going to be Audrey LeClaire, the sophomore from Phoenix, Arizona. So LeClaire gives the Wolverines some speed over there at first with nobody out. Hogan Rod in the ninth spot, followed by Blair and then Rodriguez for the Wolverines as Michigan looks to add to what is already a 2-0 lead. Haley Hoganrod, the fifth-year senior, one of several seniors who will be honored tomorrow at the closing of the regular season and the final regular season game at Alumni Field. It's certainly a possibility that Michigan is able to host a regional, but we'll see how those cards play out as Hoganrod bunts it foul, nothing and one. That foul ball went over towards Lexi Blair, who had to jump out of the way quick over as she's standing on deck. Audrey LeClaire, two for two on the season, stolen base attempts, but don't know if they want to test with Stanley's arm. She's proven that she can throw runners out. The 1 bunted, charging in a third to field it is Linkavage. She fires to first in time. On her way to second and in safely is Audrey LeClaire. So a productive bunt out for Haley Hoganrod, and that'll set the table for Lexi Blair, who had a gapper back in the first and came around to score on the hit from Hannah Carson. Now is a chance to drive in a run of her own with Audrey LeClaire on at second and just one away. Textbook Michigan softball right there. Bunting runners over, putting them in scoring position, especially for a person like Lexi Blair at the plate now. First pitch to Blair rides high, a ball and no strikes. Between today and last night, Hitchcock has not fared well against Blair. Blair is three for five against her with a pair of doubles. So, and with first base open, I'm sure Hitchcock will be pitching a little cautiously. The 1-0 just outside, a ball and a strike. Obviously a double in the gap like her last time up would score Audrey LeClaire from second base, but LeClaire's got the wheels. A well-placed single could do it as well. 
Blair heading the count 2-0, and make it 3-0. and That one skips outside. And now you really have to be careful if you're Hitchcock. Standing on deck is Natalia Rodriguez. She walked and scored back in the first. The 3-0, Blair's taking on the outside corner a strike, 3-1. and one. So Hitchcock not giving in here. Hitchcock's going to have to go right back at Lexi Blair, though, and that 419 batting average on the scoreboard is looming large. Here comes the 3-1. Line to second, Lane fields it, throws to first in time. Hit off the end of the bat by Blair. For out number two, LeClaire scampers to third, and then I'll hand the baton over to Natalia Rodriguez to try and get that running. Nat Rod, 0 for 1 last game. But had a productive game for sure, Lou Allen in the on deck circle. First pitch of the at bat from Hitchcock is high. 1-0. LeClaire at third. Michigan up 2-0 here in the bottom of the second. Kiki Thole led off the inning with a walk. It was pinch ran for, for by LeClaire. Hogan Rod bunted her to second, and then Blair grounded out, and she advanced to third. Now it's Rodriguez. The 1-0 is low. 2-0. So Hitchcock flirting with danger, continuing to fall behind in the count. First to Blair, was able to retire her, and now to Rodriguez. Up in the count, 2-0. Here comes the pitch, taking all the way inside, ball three. And Lou Allen looms on deck. That one real close. Retire Rodriguez showing off her good eye up the plate. Two runners on for Lou Allen would be very beneficial for Michigan. Comes the 3-0, taking strike down the middle, 3-1. and one. Now let's see what Rodriguez can do here in a hitter's count. Hitchcock doesn't want to lose her, especially with Lou Allen on deck. Two away, a man on third in LeClaire. Here comes the 3-1. Low ball four. Rodriguez works her second walk of the game, and here comes Lou Allen. Lou in her last time up. She's 0 for 1 on the day. Grounded out to first base, but the ball she hit was absolutely ripped. First baseman Callaway made a nice play. So Lou Allen looking to add to her team leading RBI total. She's got 40 on the season after registering two on a double in game number one. First pitch from Hitchcock, swinging and rifles it into left field for a base hit. One run is in and caught in between second and third. And now trying to get back to second is Rodriguez, and she slides in safely. She took a hard turn, slammed on the brakes about halfway as Iliopoulos got it in quickly in left field and was able to maneuver her way back into second safely. But Lou Allen, first pitch swinging, just roping it into left field for a scorching RBI base stock. The Wolverines finally get LeClaire in, and it's three to nothing, Michigan. You know, when you're having a day, you're having a day, and that's what Lou Allen's doing right now. Four for five on the afternoon. Anything left over the plate, she's looking to grip it and rip it. And the umpires are convening, wondering if they're talking about that play at second. And they did talk about that, and they confirmed Rodriguez is safe. So Taylor Bump now will be the batter with runners on first and second and still two away. I mean, that ball was smoked right down the line. Had potential to be a double, but we, we saw another play similar to what we saw last game. Just Iliopoulos covering over a lot of ground, taking a good angle to that ball to cut it off and keep the runner at first base. And gets it in quick enough for, like we said, that play at second base was really close for Natalia Rodriguez. A good slide saved her. Hitchcock's first pitch to bump. She's going after the first pitch and fouls it off down the left field side over the grandstand and out of play. But yeah, Rodriguez looked like she was hung out to dry pretty much halfway between second and third and somehow slammed on the brakes and sw swam her way back into second base safely with the slide. 
Nothing and one to Taylor Bump. Looking to add to her 27 RBI total, and she pops it up down the left field side. This is going to be out of play, just beyond the sidewall. Iliopoulos gave it a chase, but ran out of room, and it's nothing and two. Had that one been a little bit closer, I think Iliopoulos might have been able to make a play on that. We saw Rutgers before the game practicing that very play, kind of leaning over the wall and trying to catch balls that would land out of play. They had a drill for that very purpose, but just a few feet outside. Here's the 0-2. That rise ball is high. Bla uh, bump, rather, lays off, and it's 1-2. and two. Rodriguez, the one runner at second. Allen, the runner at first. Two-way in the inning. A run already home. Michigan's lead is 3 to nothing in the bottom of the second. Hitchcock looking to limit the damage to just that one run. The 1-2 to bump. Lined on the left field side and foul again. So Pump now has sprayed three balls that way. Just trying to get it in fair. Great two strike approach here from Taylor Bump. Just fighting off anything that's close. Don't want to get caught looking. Putting up a great fight up there at the plane. Over there, just past center field, the Michigan baseball team is currently down two to nothing against Indiana in the top of the third inning. And that one is low to bump, and it's two and two. Right as I say that, Indiana scores two more runs on a bases clearing triple. Our vantage point here, the way these two stadiums are constructed, that you could see both from either press box, which is very cool, to say the least, especially when they're both going on at the same time as they are now. Two and two, the count to bump. Lifted down the left field side, foul again, and this one is going to find the grass out of play. That's four foul balls hit down that side for Taylor Bump, who continues to stay alive as she tries to plate the two runners out there. Rodriguez at second and Allen at first with two away. The pitch count for Hitchcock now closing in on 50, and we're not even out of the second inning yet. Trying to retire Bump, the 2-2, two -two, foul straight back this time. So Bump is handing out a ton of souvenirs. That's five foul balls now in the at-bat. Proving to be a tough out. She struck out 22 times on the season. And Hitchcock would love to make that 23 and do that quickly. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Just outside on the off-speed pitch, and Bump has worked the count full. Her great turn at bat continues. Pitch count now at 50 for Ashley Hitchcock. It's getting up there, and it's getting up there quick. These Michigan hitters doing a great job of working long at bats. Here comes the 3-2 to Bump. Line to left field, hit pretty well. Elianopoulos back, it's over her head and off the wall. Rodriguez is in. Allen pulls in at second, at third rather, and in at second with an RBI double is Taylor Bump. What an at-bat for Bump, and she's rewarded for her turn at-bat at the plate with an RBI double. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself, Jared. She fought and fought and fought all the way through that at-bat, following pitch after pitch off, just waiting for the one she could drive, got it, and roped it to the wall in left field. But one thing I want to highlight, the play by Iliopoulos. The ball went over her head. She took an awkward angle. It bounced off the wall, and then she jumped up and caught it with her bare hand, turned around and fired it in. And it kept Lou Allen at third. But Bump was working her way to left field the entire at-bat as the first pitch to Carson is high, a ball and no strikes. She hit four foul balls on the left field side and then finally hit one fair to left field and got herself two, two bases out of it and an RBI. Carson opened the scoring in the second with a two-run double. Now primed to do more here as she takes it low, 2-0. and Allen at third, Bump at second. Not a ton of speed at the bases on the bases, two away in the inning as Hitchcock takes a deep breath and she's just trying to get out of it at this point and now we're going to have a rendezvous at the mound as the pitching coach comes out for Rutgers. That two run double back in the first inning put Hannah Carson's average over 300. Looking at the Michigan lineup, they've got a whole bunch of those numbers. Lexi Blair, 
sitting over 400, the only one there. Lou Allen close behind it, 373. But then Taylor Bump, Hannah Carson, Julia Jimenez, and Lexi Voss all hitting over 300. Carson had a base hit in game one, a double her first time up today in game two. As Michigan looks to sweep the doubleheader from Rutgers. Won in the first game 13-0, up already in the second game and 4-0 in the second inning. And looking for more. 2-0 to Carson, ripped in a right center field. That's down for a base hit. Allen will score. Bump will score. Carson's trying for second, sliding safely as the throw can't be handled cleanly by Lane. It's a two-run double for Hannah Carson. Her second two-run double of the day. And Michigan is up 6 to nothing. Up 6 nothing in the second inning. Deja vu of last game. Michigan just continues to hammer anything left over the plate. Hannah Carson, have a day. Have a day indeed. Two at-bats, two doubles, four RBI, and you've pushed your team to a 6 nothing lead as Julia Jimenez steps up to the plate against Hitchcock, who cannot get anyone out at this point. Yeah, Hitchcock struggling. Michigan putting together a nice two-out rally, though. Runner in scoring position on second base. Pitch number one goes by, low and outside for Julia Jimenez. And that's what cost her to Carson, falling behind in the count. Carson got a pitch to hit and grooved it. And uh, now she's behind in the count to Jimenez, 1-0. Oh. Here comes the 1-0. Oh. Just below the knees, ball two. Michigan struggled to put runs across against Hitchcock last night. They only ended up winning that game 3 to nothing. But that has not been the case so far today. Here's the 2-0 to Jimenez at the letters for a strike. Michigan scored 13 runs in the first game of the doubleheader earlier today. Already have six runs, and we're not even through two innings here in game two. Jimenez batting at a 3.23 clip, four homers and 18 RBIs. Had a great weekend against Minnesota. Last weekend, she pops this one foul over toward the Rutgers dugout and running out of room is Lynn Cavage as it lands into the dugout out of play. The count two and two. Rutgers still looking for their first run of this series as well. But it's got to be pretty disheartening for Wiz Stanley today to have now watched 19 Wolverines trot on past her at home plate. And the way your offense is going, if you're Rutgers, a six-run deficit has to feel insurmountable. Here comes the 2-2 to Jimenez, lined foul down the left field side. It caroms off the protective fencing in front of the Rutgers dugout and back into the field of play. Still 2-2. Two and two. Sun's starting to shine a little bit more. It's broke its way through the clouds. It's been warm all day. It just hasn't quite been sunny. Great day to play baseball or softball. Both are ongoing. We've got both the WCBN sports. Here's the 2-2 to Jimenez. Hit our way and just above us. Oh, that was so close to us. Just I above our heads. And it's still 2-2 two and two to Jimenez, who stays alive. Who do we talk to to get the roof taken off this place so we can catch those next if time? If the roof is taken off, the window is open, I'm just sticking my hand right out. 2-2 two, two to Jimenez. Swing and a miss. She chases the riser upstairs for out number three. But not before Michigan puts up a four, stop, four spot. The big hit, another two-run double by Hannah Carson. And at the end of two, it's 6 to nothing. Wolverines over Rutgers, Michigan handing it to the Scarlet Knights yet again. Yeah, this Michigan offense just can't be stopped. Like we said a couple moments ago, 19 total runs on the day. They're up 6 to nothing right now. I mean, it must feel really good. And in the words of the chant, it's great to be a Michigan Wolverine, especially today. And Michigan softball team is certainly... Proving that to be true so far today against Rutgers and in this series against Rutgers. Won last night 3-0, won in game one today 
of the doubleheader, 13 to nothing, and up six to nothing in game two. And when or if will Rutgers score? The offense has been silent through 14 innings of play so far across these three games. And as the Scarlet Knights look to get something going against Megan Bobby, and they'll have seven, eight, nine up in the order. It's been six up, six down so far today for Bobian. Yeah, Rutgers, just no answers for the two Michigan Aces, as well as Sarah Schaefer put in some innings of work. Rutgers only three total hits over the course of these three games so far. Still looking for their first run. Workman going to look to be the first one to do that for her team. It'll be Workman, Hakletubi, and Lane for the Scarlet Knights here in the top of the third. Workman 0 for 1 with a walk in game one of the doubleheader. Hitting 214 on the season. Bobby in, um, in the pitcher's circle. And she's about ready to go uh, into the windup. And here comes the first pitch. Off speed sits high, 1 0. Good pitch there by Bobby and just leading in with the off speed. Trying to catch Workman chasing early in the count. The 1 0 to Workman. Fastball down the middle. It's 1 and 1. Six up, six down, but no strikeouts so far for Megan Bobian. It's been three ground outs, a pair of pop outs, and a fly out so far for Rutgers against Bobian. That one's high. It's two and one. Bobian not as prolific with the strikeout as her teammate, Staraka. It's hard to be, but pretty good in her own right. 184 strikeouts entering the day. Still waiting for number 185. Ranked 22nd nationally with 10 strikeouts per game. And there's a cut and a miss at a fastball, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, just absolutely blew that one by her. Like we said, Bobby not quite as prolific as a strikeout pitcher, but still absolutely dominant. 2-2 two, two to Workman. Swing and a miss. She struck her out. Went with the high heat. Uh, that's how the third starts with the strikeout. For Megan Bobian. Coming into this contest, Ashley Hitchcock for Rutgers had thrown 127 and one-thirds innings and tallied 84 strikeouts. Megan Bobian had thrown just three more innings and has 100 more strikeouts coming into this game. A tale of two pitchers. and Bobian's on the right side of that line as there's a strike. Nothing at one. End the game today. Six nothing to score in favor of Bobian and the Wolverines in the top of the third with one out gone by. Hakalachubi the batter for Rutgers. Left-handed hitter. The 0-1 from Bobby and just missed up and away, 2-0. Lane on deck, the 1-1. Lifted foul, bump shading her eyes, and she makes the catch right in front of the Rutgers dugout for out number two. Bump would have had to cover a lot of ground for that one if she hadn't been playing up in anticipation of a sneaky bunt from Hawk Latubi. She was well up in front of third base, only had to take a few steps over and settle under it. Really the most difficult part of that, as you mentioned, Jared, the sun playing a huge factor. Sun peeking through every now and then. Digis there for Bump, who proved unaffected. First pitch, fastball in for a strike to the number nine hitter, Taylor Lane, and it's nothing in one. Over the course of this series, the Sun has played a factor. We saw Taylor Lane yesterday standing at second base, just let a ball drop right in front of her just because she couldn't see it. 0-1 to Lane is way upstairs. 1-1. One one. Michigan's lead. Still pretty comfortable. Six runs on five hits. Rutgers with goose eggs in both of those categories. 1-1 one, one to Lane. Lifted to right field, but right at Lexi Voss. Makes the catch. It's another 1-2-3 inning for Megan Bobian. 
No, no runs across, no base runners either. Heading to the bottom of the third, 6 nothing Wolverines. Michigan going to look to tack on a few more here. I mean, looking at the pattern on the scoreboard, Michigan should be due to score eight here. <laughs> we went two in the bottom of the first, doubled that to four. And if we're going to double that, well, this game might be over quickly. But it's been all Wolverines so far today. And Megan Bobian, only one strikeout. But when you're setting down batters like she is, I'm sure she'll take that making it look very easy against Rutgers. Yeah, Rutgers hasn't even really been able to make solid contact against her. Everything they've put in play has been pretty softly hit. That last hit by Lane, probably the most well-struck ball of the day. But Lexi Voss barely had to move to snag it. Speaking of Lexi Voss, she will be the first Wolverine due up. Struck out looking your first time up. It's 7 8 9. Voss, Kiki Thole, and then Haley Hoganrod to close it out. And then goes back to the top of the order to Lexi Blair. And if you're just joining us, Hannah Carson's been the story offensively in this game for the Wolverines. She's driven in, driven in four runs and hit two gappers. So two doubles on the day for Hannah Carson, who's not trying to start behind the plate. That's Kiki Thull, but Carson's still in the lineup as a designated player, certainly proving her worth. Lexi Voss steps into the batter's box as we are about to begin the bottom of the third with Michigan up 6 to nothing, and Ashley Hitchcock back out there to begin her third inning of work. It's been a struggle for her so far today. She's been tagged for six runs, double the amount she gave up yesterday against Michigan when she surrendered just three runs across six innings despite scattering nine hits. Lexi Voss steps in, Hitchcock in the pitcher circle, and the bottom of the third is underway with the first pitch that is low for ball one. Hey, that one's scraping the shoelaces, Alexi Voss. This game moving right along. 1 0 to Voss. And a hitter. And the Wolverines, for the third straight time, will have a leadoff base runner. That one just glances the front left leg of Lexi Voss. Not face at all. Trots on down to first base in Michigan. With a free base runner here, that's going to bring up Kiki Thole. Walked her last time up. Audrey LeClaire came in to pinch run. Kiki Thole earned her way into the lineup with a big home run in game one of today's doubleheader, blasting it off to center field on a 3-2 count and worked a great turn of bat to lead off the second with a full count walk. And that first pitch rides low, 1-0 to Thole. Lost the runner at first. Nobody out here in the bottom of the third as Michigan takes its hacks against Hitchcock. After Thole, it'll be Hoganrod, and then Lexi Blair. And at that point, it'll be third time through the order. 1-0 to Thole, skips in. And nice stop behind the plate by with Stanley to keep Voss on at first. Well, Thole is halfway down the, more than halfway down the baseline. I don't know if she thought if it hit her or not. The umpires are convening. And they are going to rule a hitter, I guess. Because she's Sana first and Voss is heading to second. If so, that's back-to-back -back hit by pitches to begin the inning for Michigan. First and second with nobody out. Guess it must have clipped that front left elbow of Kiki Thole. Don't really have confirmation yet, just that it says hit by pitch. So two in a row. And two Michigan base runners. Michigan will take it. And so the table is set yet again. This time it's Haley Hoganrod who bunted and got down the sacrifice back in the second. And now it look like it looks like Hitchcock's day may be done. Yep, yeah, looks like Izzy Baruti is going to come back out there into the circle. We saw her last game. She looked pretty good at times, and then others, well, not so good. Well, 
She's a warrior for going back out there again after Jaden Vickers could not get an out in game one. Baruti came in in relief. Seven hits and seven runs, just two earned. Her defense really let her down behind her across four innings. Walked two, struck out three, faced 23 batters and threw 86 pitches, but she is right back out there and raring to go. Coming into another jam with back-to-back hit-by-pitches, ending Hitchcock's day prematurely in the third. Her line not closed. She's responsible for both runners on base, has already given up six runs in the, in the game. It's going to be Hogenrod due up first against Baruti. And then it will be the top of the order. So Rudy, right. when she first came in last game, looked like she was going to be the answer that Rutgers needed. Looked dominant in her first inning of work, and then next time up, let in six runs, and all those hopes kind of faded away. And right now she's just trying to keep it close. Runners are first and second. Nobody out. First pitch to Hogan Rod is high for ball one. Two runners on and one in scoring position with Lexi Voss at second. Kiki Thole over at first base. 1-0. Hoganrod fouls it back. A big cut. And it's 1-1. One one. Hoganrod hitting just 228 on the year, but she cemented herself as a regular within Michigan's lineup. Starting the last 24 games. Nine RBIs on the year, a chance to add to that tally here. Here comes the 1-1, one, one. lifted in the air, shallow right center, this might drop, coming in and making a sliding catch is Hawk Latubi. Wow, what an impressive grab by the center fielder, advancing to third on the fly ball and tagging up is Voss. So it's a productive out, out. that had trouble running all over it though, and a great catch made by Hawk Latubi. Great heads up base running there by Lexi Voss. That ball was caught in pretty shallow right field, but like you said, Hawk Latubi had to lay out for that one, so she was on the ground. Lexi Voss realizing that and taking advantage of her not being able to throw over to third base. That's gonna bring out Lexi Blair. First pitch to Blair taken just below the knees, one and oh. Well, after in game number one, uh, her her defense really let Baruti down. She gets bailed out there. So perhaps the script has been flipped for Baruti. 1-0 the count to Blair. She's by no means out of this. Runners at the corners with one out, and that pitch misses away, and it's quickly 2-0. Haters count here for Lexi Blair. Scary situation for Rutgers. You're already down six. You've got runners on the corners. 22 RBIs, looking like it could be more. 2-0 to Blair, down in the middle, 2-1. Blair led off the bottom of the first with a double, came around to score on one of Hannah Carson's two doubles on the afternoon. Looking to extend what is already a 6 to nothing Michigan lead. 2-1 to Blair, skips in and a nice stop, sliding behind the plate to keep Voss at bay at third is with Stanley. Uh, but it's nonetheless three and one to Lexi Blair. Natalia Rodriguez on deck. After her, Lou Allen, one away in the inning. Good block to keep Voss at third base, as you said, but Kiki Thole taking advantage of it, advancing to second. And that one's ripped into right center field. That's down for a base, and it heads to the wall. One run is in. Thole is coming out. Blair's into second, standing. Close play, but she's in with a double. And it's a two-run double. That's the third two-run double of the day for Michigan. Lexi Blair gets it done this time, and it's 8 to nothing Wolverines. Lexi Blair's second double of the day. That play much closer than it probably should have been. I don't think Blair thought they were going to try to make a play for her at second base. She was in standing up, but the tag applied pretty much right away. They skipped the cutoff and just tried to shoot her at two, but... Not quick enough. Natalia Rodriguez stepping up to the plate now. She's walked twice, scored both times. First pitch to Rodriguez, low and in, one and out. Oh. 
So Lexi Blair, two doubles on the day, drives in two runs. And Rodriguez, a big cut and a miss at a fastball. It's one and one. Eight to nothing to score for Michigan. Eight runs on six hits and still going in the bottom of the third. Lou Allen over in the on deck circle. With Blair's hit, the book is closed on Hitchcock. Responsible for all eight of those runs as that one is low two and one. So eight runs across two plus innings, gave up five hits, walked four, struck out two. Surrendered four doubles as well. Two and one. That skips into the plate on a hop, and it's three and one. Another nice stop by with Stanley. Lou Allen on deck. Rodriguez eyeing her third walk in three innings. Lou Allen. Sitting on deck, obviously that big. Uh, that one's up and in, ball four. Three plate appearances, three walks for Natalia Rodriguez. And as you said, here comes Lou Allen, that big threat in the middle of Michigan's order. She's done her damage already today as an RBI single. Three for three last game. Second two of those came off of Izzy Baruti. And Baruti, I'm sure, not the happiest of campers to be seeing Lou Allen again. So one out, speed on the bases, Blair at second, Rodriguez at the first, Allen first pitch swinging, rifles it off the screen down the first base side, and it's nothing and one. Had that bat connected cleanly, that ball might have cleared the grandstands, that was an absolute hack. Allen, no short of power. Comes the 0-1, taking just downstairs, and it's one and one. Got to figure a base hit will score Blair with her speed. Rodriguez, fleet of foot as well on at first. One and one, the count to Lou Allen. One, one, taken low and away, ball two. And a brief meeting at the mound here. Chatting is Workman giving her pitcher a bit of a pep talk. This is not a position you want to be in if you're Rockers. With only one out, you're most likely going to have to face Allen and Bump. 2-1 just clips the bottom of the zone. I don't know if Allen liked that call. She's laughing a bit. 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, that one... A little bit low. I mean, it dropped right off the table. Where Stanley had to scoop it up out of the dirt as it came by. I was a little surprised it was called a strike, but nonetheless, Allen's still in the at bat. Two and two, the count. Here it comes. Ripped to second, and the only play is to first. That ball died, and it was fielded nicely by Lane. And so, a productive out for Allen. The runners advance. Blair to third, Rodriguez to second. And now bump at the dish. And the thing that with the way Michigan's lineup is constructed and with the way that Michigan has been hitting, you get through Allen or you manage to get through Allen, it doesn't get any easier with Taylor Bump coming to the dish. Not at all. I mean, they intentionally walked Taylor Bump her first time up, which loaded the bases for Hannah Carson's first two RBI double. And they're going to walk her again to load the bases for the second time. I mean... I get you don't want to throw to Taylor Bump after everything she's done to you today, but Hannah Carson's two for two right now with two two RBI doubles. I'm uh, I'm on the same page as you. I get you don't want to face Bump and you have first base open, but it's not like Hannah Carson is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. So she has scorched the ball twice, already driven in four runs. I'm sure she felt disrespected the first time when she got intentionally walked, and then for Rutgers to turn around and do it again, especially after the strategy backfired first go around. Let's see what Carson has in store here. It's already eight nothing. Michigan with the comfortable lead. Two Just looking at Carson's stats from this game, two doubles, both of which knocked in two runs. 
don't know if you would intentionally walk the batter before to face that. First pitch, Carson went after it and rolls it foul back to the screen. She took a hack, and it's nothing in one. You could tell she wants to prove Rutgers wrong yet again. Yeah, Carson's 19 RBIs. Looking like they could potentially be more. There is two outs. Blair at third, Rodriguez at second, bump at first. Two away, here's the 0-1 to Carson. Pull to first, make bobbling at first and she'll have no play. A run is in, Callaway couldn't field it cleanly and Carson's gonna reach. That one's gonna go down as an error but Carson hit that ball hard down the first baseline. Knocks in another run. Right on the nose, but right to Callaway. Was positioned perfectly, playing along the line behind the bag. It was going to be a foot race, but she could not feel it cleanly, muffling it. And the bases are still loaded. Three runs in now in the inning. Julia Jimenez coming to the plate. First pitch to Jimenez is low, 1-0. and oh. As dominant as they've been as of late, at least in this game speaking, this is the kind of portion of the lineup that Rutgers wants to be dealing with here with two outs. 1-0 to Jimenez. Lined into right field, but right at Fawcett. And that'll end the inning. Not before three runs come home. And Michigan pushes its lead to nine to nothing. The Wolverines knock out Hitchcock. Tag their old friend. Again on the mound, Barutu. And it's nine to nothing Michigan at the end of three. Bobine's gonna head back out and try to keep it going. But as we've mentioned, Michigan, so far in this series, has now scored 25 unanswered runs. Three in game one, 13 in game two, and now nine going into the top of the fourth inning in game three. And the Rutgers offense is just out of any answers at this point. Just trying to find some sort of breakthrough. Nine, it's been nine up, nine down for Megan Bovian, who comes back to the mound after another long stint resting on the bench as she watched her team plate some more runs to her benefit. We do have a defensive substitution. Lauren Essman over on first base. Not sure if that's permanent or if Lou Allen's just taking her time getting out here. We will see in a couple minutes or so. And looks like it is going to be Esmond out there playing first base. Besides that, the defense still the same. Lexi Blair, Hoganrod, and Lexi Voss left to right in the outfield. And Megan Bobian ready for inning number four. It's back to the top of the order for Rutgers. Linkavich, Callaway, Bach, one, two, three. Lankiewicz is 0 for 1. She lined out to first. Allen at first, back in the first. And she's in the batter's box. Bill being in the pitcher's circle. First pitch on the way, taken just inside 1 and 0. Lankiewicz hitting 285. Struggled, uh, or has struggled as is the case with the rest of the Rutgers bats this series. Ofer in an Ofer so far. Lines that one deep to right center. Easing back his Hogan right onto the track and she makes the catch. Hit well but not well enough. A couple feet shy of clearing that yellow line. And so it's an out to begin the fourth for Megan Bobian. And Cabbage has made decent contact Throughout this entire game so far, our first time up hit an absolute scorcher down the first base line that Lou Allen made a nice play on. And that one was put well out there. Hogan Rod just had plenty of time to cover all the ground she needed. And so that'll bring up the left-handed hitting Callaway. Hit one back to Bobian. 
Back in the first, she's first between, pops it up, diving and making the catch is Kiki Thole running up the first baseline and sprawling out full extension to make the grab. Kiki Thole's having a day. Got her shot on the offensive side in game number one, hit that monster home run, earned her spot in the starting lineup for this game and has made the most of it. Two very impressive defensive plays. That one, one of the most impressive plays I've seen all day. Thole got a great read on that and pounced on it. And so two up, two down in the fourth. Here's the first pitch to Bach, it's high, one and oh. Bobian is dealing today without the strikeout, has fanned just one. That was Workman leading off the third. But she has gone 11 up, 11 down without the strikeout. One oh to Bach. Just below the knees, 2 and 0. Hitters count here for Kayla Bach as she steps back in, grounded out her last time up over towards Julia Jimenez. That ball was deep in the hole, but Jimenez made a nice play to get over to it. 2 0 to Bach. Taken for a strike on a fastball, 2 1 1. Bach grounded out to second to close the first. Bobby and taking her time, looks over to the dugout for quite a while now, stepping back onto the mound, checking the wristband. And now ready to deal. Here's the 2-1. At the knees, so called strike. It's 2-2. Two and two. Great frame back there by Kiki Thole. She's really been impressive so far in this one, just flipping the glove up to bring the ball up into the zone. Quick and easy. Comes the 2-2 from Bobby and Nabak. Line to right field hit pretty well. Voss easing back onto the track and she makes the catch to retire the side. So a pair of well-struck balls against Bobian. Nothing to show for it for Rutgers. Both warning track outs. Just warning track power for the Scarlet Knights. And Bobian's through the fourth. Heading to the bottom of the fourth, nine nothing Michigan. Bobian helped out by a stellar defensive play as well behind the plate from Kiki Thole making the diving catch and the foul pop up. And everything is turning up Wolverines. Yeah, absolutely. It's gonna be seven, eight, nine. Do up for the Wolverines. Lexi Voss, Kiki Thole, and then Haley Hogenrod. Voss in her last time up. Was hit by a pitch and ended up scoring. We'll look to keep that going and do it again. Coming out for some more work for Rutgers is Izzy Baruti. Nine to nothing, Michigan on top into, into the bottom of the fourth. Anna Carson's had a big day at the plate, driving in four runs on a pair of doubles. Lexi Blair, two for three, two doubles herself and two RBIs. And a perfect day for some softball, a perfect day so far on the field for Michigan. Yeah, perfect weather for anything. Softball, baseball, doesn't matter. That game over at Ray Fisher Stadium, Indiana, still holds a 4-0 lead in the top of the fifth. Looks like we might have some substitutions. As Rutgers has a quick word with the home plate umpire, Jonathan Hand. And we'll see what those are. Carol Hutchins out there as well. Looks like we might have a pinch hitter for Michigan. It is going to be Thais Gonzalez hitting for Lexi Voss. Gonzalez was one for one in her one at bat last game. Legged out an infield single. Just as the Wolverines did in game one. Starting to empty the bench a little bit in game two. We already saw Lou Allen pulled for Lauren Esman and now Thais Gonzalez coming up to hit in favor of Lexi Voss. As we begin the bottom of the fourth with Michigan up comfortably Nine to nothing. <laughs> oh, 
So Gonzalez steps in to face Hitchcock, left-handed hitter. Batting just 120 on the season, but did get that hit earlier today in the first game of the doubleheader. First pitch to Gonzalez, down the middle for a strike, nothing and one. Gonzalez, a familiar name around the Michigan program. Fifth year graduate senior. Her Michigan career not quite done yet. Even though the regular season ends tomorrow, Michigan well positioned to head into the postseason. And that pitch clips Rodriguez on the back. Tried to spin out away from it, but could not. She'll shake it off and trot down to first. And for the fourth time in four innings, the Wolverines have a lead off base runner. Michigan been very effective on the base pass. Kiki Thole stepping up to the plate now. He's yet to tally in at bat today. It has two plate appearances of walking. Her first time up was hit by a pitch, and her last time up ended up scoring. Three, that's three times Michigan batters have been hit today. First pitch is a strike at the knees to Kiki Thol. Gonzalez, so, three for three on the air on steal attempts. Three hit batsmen, six walks. Two of them intentional for Michigan. Can't have that if you're the Rutgers pitching staff. 0-1 to Thol. Low and away, ball one. Here's some cheers from the Michigan bench of Kiki. Kiki. See if Kiki Thol can add to what has been an impressive day. Takes it low. She homered in game one of the doubleheader and drew the start in game two. Got a walk, scored. Hit by a pitch, scored. And made a fantastic diving play behind the plate. Ahead in the count here, two and one. Line to right center field, hit well, but easing back and making the catch is Holotabi, Holotubi rather, and that's the first out of the inning. Hit well by Thol, not well enough. Yeah, like you said, that ball is not quite enough to get out, put right in the gap, and plenty of time for Holotubi to get over to it. Kaylee Rodriguez is going to be a pinch hitter here, stepping in for Haley Hoganrod, so the freshman getting some more work. We saw her come in as a pinch runner in game one. Now we're going to see her first plate appearance of this series. So she'll come in to face Izzy Baruti, who continues to give Rutgers the innings they sorely need. Down in the game, nine to nothing. Gonzalez still on at first, one out. And Kaylee Rodriguez in as the pinch hitter. First pitch to Rodriguez, lefty hitter takes Low and away for ball one. Rodriguez, a perfect 1,000 batting average on the season. A lot at stake here. <laughs> two at-bats and two hits, one of which was a home run. Can she continue it? That loops in for a strike on the breaking ball. It's one and one. And she said a lot riding on this at-bat. Perfect on base percentage, perfect batting average. And that slugging percentage has to be pretty high with that one homer. 1-1, one, one, just outside, ball two. Slugging percentage sitting at 2,500 right okay. now. Now that one might be unsustainable. Two and one to Rodriguez as Baruti steps back into the pitcher circle. Comes the 2 1. Just upstairs, ball three. That's a, We've seen with Stanley hold that pitch a few times today, trying to get the call, but again, unable to get it, and it's 3 and 1. Sierra Kirsten over in the on deck circle for Lexi Blair. And that's fouled back to the screen. 3 and 2. The count goes full. Big cut there from Kaylee Rodriguez. Three and 
3-2 to Rodriguez. Upstairs, ball four, way upstairs on the off speed. And Rodriguez keeps that batting average intact, keeps the slugging percentage intact, and adds to her on base percentage. Stepping up now is Sierra Kirsten. We've seen her in limited capacity in this series. On deck is Natalia Rodriguez. So as Wolverines continue to utilize the bench, this is the fourth pinch hitter, or third pinch hitter rather, in four batters this inning. Kirsten has seen a lot of playing time this year as a freshman. Struggled a bit, hitting just 221. She'll have a chance here with runners at first and second, and just one away. First pitch to Kirsten, pulled on the ground into right field for a base hit. And stopping at third is Gonzalez, as firing it in from right field is Fawcett. So one pitch and a one hard base hit for Sierra Kirsten. Everyone moves up a base, and the bases are loaded for Natalia Rodriguez. Great piece of hitting there by Sierra Carson. Just sat on it, kept her weight on the back foot, and ripped that ball right down the first baseline. Natalia Rodriguez up at the plate. As you mentioned, Lauren Esman on deck. In for Lou Allen. Rodriguez, three walks on the day. Scored her first two times up. Was stranded on third her last time. First pitch to Rodriguez down the middle, a strike from Baruti, and it's nothing in one. He's got to get ahead of Rodriguez because she doesn't have anywhere to put her. The bases are loaded. Gonzalez, the runner on a third. On at second is Rodriguez, and on at first is Kirsten. That's lined, caught by Baruti, and that's all she'll get. Stranding way off second was, but was Rodriguez, but... As Baruti caught it and turned, she had no one to throw it to. No one was near the bag. bag. Lane tried dashing over to her late. But by that time, Rodriguez had already got him back in. So a hard out off the bat of Natalia Rodriguez. And that'll hand it over to Lauren Esman. The base is still loaded and two away. That ball was absolutely roped. Unfortunate placement about a foot higher. That would have been an easy single. Would have scored one, if not two runs. First pitch to Esman. She's first pitch swinging up the middle and into center field a base hit. Gonzalez scores. Rounding third and coming in to score is Rodriguez. Lauren Esman with a two-run base hit up the middle. And it's 11-0 Michigan. Michigan staying aggressive, keeping their foot on the gas, not letting up at all. Esman comes in for Lou Allen, and Michigan doesn't miss a beat in that three-hole. We're going to have another pinch hitter, Taylor Bump. Isn't going to step up to the plate. Instead, it is going to be Jessica Garman. So the pinch hitters continue to come up for Michigan. As Garman steps to the dish, ending Bumps Day. 11 0 the score. Wolverines on top in the bottom of the fourth. First pitch to Garmin. She's taking and takes it high, 1 0. Hannah Carson in the on deck circle will have the person in front of her hit. For only the second time in this contest. And Garmin a wave and a miss at that off-speed pitch well out in front of it, and it's one and one. Garmin just completely fooled. Great change up by Baruti there. One one to Garmin at the knees for a strike. It's one and two. Brody just trying to keep her team in it as best as she can.
One, two, check swing. She went around at the breaking ball in the dirt. And so Baruti ends the inning with a strikeout. Again, not before. Michigan plates two runs. They've scored multiple runs in every frame today. It's 11-0 as we head to the top of the fifth. Michigan just three outs away from closing this one out again. Would be another run rule if they hold Rutgers scoreless. They can actually allow Rutgers to score one run. Looks like Lexi Blair has re-entered and will be going back out into her spot in center field. Looks like the defensive lineup in the outfield is going to be Thais Gonzalez in right field, Lexi Blair in center, and Sierra Kirsten in left. Infield lineup, same as last inning. Lauren Esman, the only change since the starters. It's going to be 4 5 6 due up for Rutgers. Taylor Fawcett followed by Anissa Iliopoulos and then Kirsten with Stanley. Megan Bovian back out for more work. She's been brilliant so far today. 12 up, 12 down against the Scarlet Knights. And she could close things out here with Michigan again potentially winning on the run rule. Eleven to nothing, the Wolf reads on top. Carol Hutchins has finished sorting some things out with the umpires, all the substitutions. But Rucker's waiting to make theirs. Four, five, six, due up in the Scarlet Knight batting order. Fawcett, Iliopolis, and with Stanley. Everything just taking time, getting everything sorted out. And Michigan just waiting to close this out. All but final here, the score 11-0. It was 13-0 in game one of the doubleheader, 3-0 last night. Wolverines looking to take game three from Rutgers. They'll play again tomorrow in the afternoon. And we are about finally ready to get things going to begin the fifth. 11 nothing the score. Michigan in front, Megan Bobian back to the pitcher circle for inning number five. And she deals a first pitch low and away to Fawcett for ball one. Oh, well, speed just missing there. Fawcett popped out to Kiki Thole her first time up. 1-0, loops it foul down the first baseline out of the reach of Esmond. And it's one and one. Bobby and just in a groove here, keeping it going. As we said, a little bit ago, just three outs away from closing this one out and another run rule. Bobby and deals the one one, just upstairs, two and one. Fawcett batting 140 on the season. No home runs and an RBI. Bobian behind in the count two and one. And that's inside ball three. Rutgers hasn't had a base runner today. Uh, Bobian and a three ball count in danger of allowing a free pass. Three one to Fawcett. 
Chop toward the right side. Jimenez feel over to her left, feels it, fires in time. Nice play on the move by Jimenez for out number one. Covered a lot of ground to get that one deep in the hole. She fielded it and was thinking about a backhand flip, but then realized she had enough time, squared the hips around and fired it to Lauren Essman at first for the first out of this inning. And one out. And that'll bring up Iliopoulos for Rutgers. The ground ball to short. Back in the second, and they're alone at bat of the afternoon. First pitch from Bobian, fouled on the right field side off the protective screen. Megan Herka in the on deck circle. She flew out to left field in foul territory on a pinch hit appearance in game one. Nothing in one. Fastball just outside, one and one to Iliopolis. Bobian has been brilliant today. Struck out just one, but that hasn't mattered. Has not allowed a base runner through four and a third. Comes the one, one. Lifted deep to left, easing back is Kirsten. Right in front of the track, she'll make the catch for the second hour of the inning, and the Wolverines are one out away. Potentially at the last batter, it's Megan Herka, as we mentioned, the freshman from Edison, New Jersey, trying to give her team some sense of life here. Herka, the left-handed hitter, strides into the box. Herker, a 150 hitter on the season, has two home runs. No, she has power. Here comes the first pitch from Bobian, and then misses in inside, 1 0. Bobian taking her time. Here comes the 1 0 to Herka. Just missed, and it's 2-0. and out. So Bobian has fallen behind in the count. She's an out away from closing this thing out. Michigan would win via the run rule. They're up 11 to nothing. They took game one via the run rule, winning 13 to nothing. Here's the 2-0. Outside ball three. And for the second time in this inning, Bobian has gone to a three ball count. I mean, all three of those balls are right there. Three over to Herka. That's a call strike down the middle, three and one. Well, Bobian wasn't missing by much on the other ones, as he said, and she gets the call there. Yeah, I couldn't tell you the difference between that one and the last three. Bobian still in this fight. 3-1 sits the count as she goes to the windup. Here comes the 3-1. Fouled on the first base side. It's 3-2, and, and Michigan's a strike away. You hear some noise for about the first time today from the Rutgers dugout as they try to stay alive here. As you said, one strike away. 3-2 and two to Herka. Bobian. Deal, swing and a miss, she struck her out. Went with the riser, and Bobian fell after that one, but she gets up, she's okay. And Michigan wins 11 to nothing. Bobian pitches five perfect innings. Doesn't allow a hit, doesn't give up a walk. No one reaches bases for the Scarlet Knights, and the Wolverines have the victory via the run rule. It's 11 to nothing win. Absolutely dominant performance by Megan Bobie. And these are times where you wish the run rule wasn't in effect to see how much longer she could have gone. But like you said, five perfect innings. Michigan puts up 11 runs. Throughout these two games today, the doubleheader, Michigan wins by a margin of 24 to nothing. Quite literally a perfect day for Michigan. Blanking Rutgers, 
24 nothing through both games, as you said. That 13 nothing victory in game one of the doubleheader. All they do is follow that up with an 11 nothing victory in game two of the doubleheader. And that's going to do it for our coverage of today's doubleheader. Uh, we'll have coverage again for tomorrow's game as this four-game series comes to a close against the Scarlet Knights. Michigan looks to sweep the series tomorrow afternoon. Uh, but for today, that's all. For Charlie Brigham, I'm Jared Greenspan. Thanks so much for joining us. And as always, go Blue.